and welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. And today I'm going to show you how to uh, watercolor this little snowman from one of our newest releases. Uh, I'm Bonnie Krebs and I'm gonna show you how to watercolor quickly and easily uh, this little guy right here. So this is one of our new releases. This is the Christmas Slimline set and it includes this little snowman. He's kind of tall, and we've also got this little bunny on here and a couple of little birds, uh, tons of sentiments uh, that go in this set. So it really works well for a slimline card, so something that's taller, like this one. Um, now there's a lot to color on here, so I'm gonna show you how to color this little guy quick and easy, and uh, show you some tips and tricks to make your watercolor look more realistic. So we're gonna get started here. Here's what we're going to do. This is our project. I've put the little bird up on his hat and placed the little bunny down here below. And I don't know if you can see on here, but I've added some glitter to it. And that also makes it really sparkly and more Christmassy. And you can see by looking at this, how three dimensional this little snowman is. And it's because of the way that we color it. And it's not hard to do. It's just a matter of knowing a few little tips and tricks. And that's what I'm gonna do is show that to you today. So the first thing I've done is stamp my uh, basic images onto watercolor paper. Now this is really important that you use watercolor paper. You can't use cardstock for this technique. It's got to be watercolor paper. Uh, what I'm using is Canson 140 pound cold press and it works like a dream for this technique. I also have some water with me and I have a palette and I'm going to use my palette to mix color and um, add some color to my image. So now that I've got that set up here, uh, let's get going. So what I've done is I've inked the back of my stamp. Now this is a clear stamp. I've inked the back with a neutral gray color. So I've used this Tombow color. It's an N79. It's actually a gray, sort of a gray brown color. It's very neutral and you can do that. You can use any sort of gray really with this. You wanna keep it pretty light. And if you'll notice on here, the lines look a little blotchy and that's because we're using a clear stamp and sometimes the ink catches in the little corners. And that's a good thing because we want it to look more like a watercolor. So we don't want straight, even lines. We want lines that are a little bit um, blotchy and broken. So this is all a good thing. So if you see that when you go to uh, ink your stamp and you go to ink it on your watercolor paper and you notice that there's some little blotchy areas. That's all a good thing. Okay, so I've stamped this on here. I used my stamp press and stamped it onto my watercolor paper. So we are going to get started here. And I'm going to start out by um, first positioning my, <laughs> let me get my palette positioned here in the right place. And I'm going to uh, dip my brush in the water and pinch it off. And the first thing that I want to do is uh, when you're coloring a big elaborate design like this, you want to keep it in sections. So don't get overwhelmed by coloring this huge, uh, this huge scene. Just start out with small areas and you're going to have a better result if you do that. So let's start up here with a little hat and I'm just going to uh, just start out by bringing the lines, the color out from the lines. So just like this. And you can see that this hat is contoured. That just means that it's rounded. And so we're going to have um, a highlight in the center. So that just means we're gonna keep the color concentrated on the sides. I'm just gonna move that water out of the way. There we go. And uh, let me just fix my lights here. So they're not glaring right there. Okay, that's better. Um, Okay, there we go. So we're going to apply some color now and I'm going to use this brown, the 969 brown, and I'm just going to put it onto my palette, dip my brush in water, and then I'm going to apply a little color and I'm going to apply the color where it's the darkest and because it's a contour here, the darkest will be on the edge and the center will be the lightest. And you can see this, kind of a straight line here. We don't, we don't want a real straight line here where the highlight is. So I'm gonna pinch my brush off again and soften this line over to the center. 
So I'm just gonna kind of soften that up and then just drag this color over to the center. And you can see that that creates a much softer line there. Now we can do it again. We can go back over it again, apply a little more color and make this hat a little darker. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pinch the color off and drag it to the center. And you can see that I'm staying in each section. I'm not crossing these lines here. That's really important that you don't drag the color across these lines that are in the image. We don't wanna lose those, lose those lines. So we're gonna just stay right uh, in each section just like this. Okay, so let's add a little color down to this section underneath here. Just like that. And as I've added color here now to the side, you see that I've left this white line kind of around this, this area of the brim here. And that's because uh, we want the brim to have a little bit of depth to it. Uh, if, if we bring that color clear to the line, it will make this brim look like it's paper thin. So we want to give it a little more, cons um, make it a little more substantial. And we do that by not bringing this color clear to the edge. Okay, just one little tiny little thing, but it's a really good thing to learn. So now I'm going to take some red, and this is just the number 885. You can use any red that you that you want. And I'm using a cool green. This is the number 249. These are, these are Tombos. And I'm just going to uh, switch brushes now. This is the number one. So I've been using a number four. This is a number one. And I'm just gonna get this, this wet now, pinch it off and then uh, add some color now to these little berries. And you know, because they're round, they're gonna have just a little highlight on them, just right there in the center. That's really important to leave that highlight on there if you can. They're really tiny, so if you can do that, you're gonna be much happier with it. And it's going to give you the impression that these little berries are round. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, clean off my brush and I'm going to do the green. Just like this. And then I'll come in here and grab some more of that green. And you can see I'm staying in each section. Dip my brush, pinch it off, and then add some color in here. Okay, just like that. Now this little leaf back here, this little holly leaf is going to be darker because it's back in the background. Just like that. And then, you know, once that's dry, we can add a little um, detail on here. Sort of bring this little detail back again. And there we go. So let's go on now to the little patch that's on his hat. And we're gonna take a little of this red and we're just going to make a little pattern here. This will really change up your, um, your project. If you add some uh, texture like this, some pattern, it's gonna give it that a little bit more um, pizzazz. It's gonna give it a lot more interest and you're going to be much happier with it if you can include some patterns like this, patterns and textures. Okay, so we are almost finished now with this, uh, this little hat, and you can see it looks way more three-dimensional now. I'm just gonna take some of this brown and I'm going to really darken this, this area here and make that really dark in there. Same with this, this area over here. Okay, so let's move down. We're gonna go uh, to the face next and I'm just gonna take a fine tip. This is a twin tone fine tip and I'm going to darken the little eyes. So the face is the most important part of the composition. That's where your eye goes first is to the little face, regardless of what it is, your eye is gonna go, first, uh, go here first. So we wanna make sure that we can see those eyes really clearly and that they're really dark. So now I'm gonna add some, some dark blue. Uh, this is the 565 Tombow, and it's a great color for shadow and snow. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and just kind of brush it along the side. Even though he's white, 
uh, he's going to have a little shadow on him. He's not going to be uh, completely white. And then I'm just gonna take some of this color and I'm gonna bring his little cheek forward by making it darker. By darkening that cheek, you're sort of bringing it forward. And then I'm gonna take some of this blue and I'm just going to make a shadow where this brim is, right underneath the brim of his hat. And you can see that that just brings this brim right up off of his face. So now let's add a little orange in here. Uh, this one is the 933 orange. And I'm just going to take a little of this orange now and color in his little nose. And then just a little bit darker down below. It's gonna be darker down underneath. And I could even just take a little brown and really darken it with that. And then I'm just gonna take a little of this blue and just put a little shadow right underneath. Just like that. Okay, so we've got this area done. You know, when you break it down, it's a lot less intimidating than when you look at the whole thing together and working section by section, uh, I think it really helps. And you sort of uh, start to see this little guy come to life. Okay, let's move on here and let's go on to his little gloves. So we're going to just pull some of this color out of the lines again, just like we've done in the past. Just pull this color out, just kind of work your way around. It's gonna be really light. This is a really light neutral color, so uh, it's not gonna be super dark, but we are still gonna get a little of this shadow in here so that we can see um, that it's starting to look three-dimensional. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little more red now to my palette. And you can see that this now is also a dome because that means it's a little rounded, so we're gonna have a little bit of a highlight here where his, his knuckles are. And then the top of the image, we're also gonna leave that light. So we're, it's always better to, you know, when you're applying color, not to, leave, not to color all the way to the top. So we're just gonna kinda leave a highlight in two places. On his knuckles and then at the very top. And then this, this area underneath here, and again, stay in each section. Don't cross any lines. Just stay in each section with your brush. Okay, and let's go to the next one here. This is a bit of a dome, but not like this one here. So we don't have to be as careful uh, with this one. We can leave a little bit of a highlight here in the center. And then as his fingers kind of curve around, we want to kind of make this a little bit darker here. And then this one, let's really get this dark underneath here. So when there's a highlight in the center, that's the lightest area. So that means that the edges around are going to be darker. Okay, you can see how that's starting to look three-dimensional now. So let's kind of move on here and let's go on to the little lantern. And I'm gonna take my twin tone again. So this is my brown twin tone. And I'm just going to uh, darken this in. This is a kind of a wire handle, so it's very thin. And so we can just color this in with a dark color. And that's gonna kind of make it stand out a little bit. So now I'm gonna take my, my brush and come in here. And this, this area underneath the lantern, that's gonna be really dark. That's gonna be really dark, it's gonna be at the bottom. So I'm going to take a little of this blue and a little brown and I'm just going to uh, add a little color to the sides because this is a, this is a uh, contour. So that just means it's rounded. So we're gonna have a highlight on it, right in the center. 
and that's gonna make it look three-dimensional. And then this area down on the bottom, that's gonna be lighter, or that's gonna be darker. Same up here. Same in here. Okay, so now let's add a little color to that candle. Some more red, some more Christmas red. And I'm just going to color this in just like that. And then just add a little more color in there like that. I'm gonna switch brushes now and go back to my number one. Always pinch it off. So when you go to dip it into the water, always pinch it off so that you don't get too much water. And this is that same orange again. So I'm just using that same one. And I'm gonna take some more of this orange now and just kind of put it around here inside this little lantern because we're gonna have a glow. Uh, we're gonna have a glow from that light. So we wanna see that that's really bright, a really bright color and warm. Okay. And then let's get this underneath here really dark. And maybe just this area in here also, just really dark. And then this, this little area here, this is where the, the side of the lantern is, we can just go right along the edge. Okay, so you can see it's shaping up now. It's starting to look like a little three-dimensional uh, image. So let's move on now to the scarf. I'm gonna switch back to my other brush. And the scarf has lots of things going on here. So it's got a lot of like curves and domes and contours. And so we really wanna pay attention to that. And you can start out by sort of putting the color where it's the darkest. So that would be in these cracks. So this, this just means that this is a dome here and a dome here. This is a dome here. And this kind of comes around like this. There's a little crevice in here. And then this, this also um, sort of curves around. So we're gonna show that. We're gonna show that by the way that we add the color. And then here we go underneath here. We've just got a lot going on with this scarf, but we can make it look so cute. So let's start out by adding some color to it. And I'm gonna add a neutral color to it first. So I'm gonna take some of this brown really lightly, and I'm just going to apply the color uh, just like we did up here. So where would it be the dark? If this is a dome, it's gonna be the darkest in here, right? And in the center. So we're gonna see those little highlights uh, on here. And we're just gonna start out really light. And the same over here, you know, as we kind of come around, this is gonna be dark inside here. And then this, this little dome here, we're gonna show that uh, just by going darker here. showing that highlight on the top. And as this kind of comes forward here, that's gonna be a little bit darker underneath. Okay, so let's come around. And you know, this is, this is also kind of hidden back in here. So that's gonna be a little bit darker. This is, this is a dome. So we're gonna see that highlight. And then this, this in here, this comes forward. And this is flatter. It's got a little, uh, it's got a little crease in it. So we're gonna make that darker. And this too, this has got a little crease, but it's not really a dome. So we don't really have to worry too much um, about that. But you know, one thing to remember is that you really don't need to have 
Um, you don't really need to color every area in. It's, it's always better to leave a little white space and just not cover every, color everything in solid. I know we, you know, we just want to do that, but if you can just kind of resist doing that, you're going to be happy with how it turns out. Okay, so I've added a little color in here now. And you know, in here where the folds are, that's going to be a little darker. And we can just make this kind of dark in here too. Uh, really where the creases are, that's where it's going to be the darkest, but the creases, that just means there's a dome. So if it's lower here, it's going to be higher here, and the highest area is going to be the, the lightest. Okay, so now let's add some detail to this, and I'm just going to, um, I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so that you can see. And I'm going to switch over to my tiny little brush and put a little more red onto my palette. And we're going to, uh, we're going to add a detail. And we're going to add a stripe onto here. And what you want to remember, you know, when you're adding a detail like this is you want to follow the contour of the design. So not straight lines. You know, obviously this, this is curving here and there's a crease. So we want to follow that crease. And that just means that you, you start out like this. You know, this is a dome here. This is a dome and it sort of comes into that crease. So just like this. And the same, you know, as you're coming down here, you know, this, this area all has a bend. And it doesn't matter if your uh, stripes are all exactly placed you know, in the right place and all exactly the same size, it does not matter at all. It matters way more that there's a bend in it and that you're following the contour of the design. That's way the most important thing. So let's, let's move over to this section and you can see it kind of comes down like this. And just kind of follow, follow these little lines. When you add, you know, a detail like this and you add, you know, some sort of pattern, it just changes everything. You know, I think this little guy looks so much different now with this pattern. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. See, this kind of comes around like this. And just look at the way that it, it's kind of hanging there and just follow that with your brush. Just follow the lines. Okay, so let's um, let's do the same over here. And just follow that around. And you can see what a difference that makes when you actually add um, when you actually add that detail on there. Now I'm just going to take some of this red and I'm just going to color in these little tassels just with my brush. And some of them will be a little lighter, some of them will be, will be darker and that's okay. It just means that some of them are closer um, in the foreground and others are back in the back. So it's good to have a variation of color. Don't worry about making everything the same. And you know, with watercolor, it's just, it's about the idea of things. And so it's so, it's so much more forgiving. Uh, things don't have to be perfect and exact. It's just a much uh, looser style uh, when you're looking at it. So, you know, when you're looking at a watercolor, you don't really expect it to be perfect and precise. You just kind of expect it to be a little muddier. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Happy with that.
so let's move on now. Let's do this little candy cane. Uh, so I'm gonna take my my uh, red, my 885, and I'm going to uh, just use the, the, um, the fine tip here. And I'm just going to uh, add the color in like this because this is this is a really dark color, a really dark red. And you know, we've got a lot of patterns going on here and a lot of color, a lot of red. So we really want this to stand out and be really dark. And we can add just another little Again, follow the lines of the candy cane. So you're going to, uh, you're just, if you add any more lines in here, you wanna make sure that they have a curve to them. Okay, that looks good. So let's go on now to, uh, to the coat. And we're going to give him a green coat and I'm gonna use that, um, that 249. And don't be intimidated by the clothing. Uh, just break it down a little area at a time and think about where the contours are. So just like just like the scarf, we're gonna have areas that are um, that have creases. And all that means is that the top of the crease is lighter than the crease itself. So you wanna make sure that the area um, on the side of the crease is the darkest when you go to apply the color. And really that's all you have to think about. And I'm just pulling this color out now to the side. Now, here's what I want to show you is, um, and I'm going to zoom in on this so that you can, you can see this. When you have all these layers like this, so you can see how this clothing is layered. You've got the jacket on top, then you've got the vest, then you've got the shirt, and then you underneath you have the snowman underneath. So you've got things that are laying on top. And the way to show that is the way that you pull the color out. So when we add water, uh, and we pull the color out of the lines. We don't, we don't color on top of the line and just follow the line. We don't do that. We pull the color out from below the line. And when you pull it out below the line, uh, this area on the other side is going to, to move up. So let me just show you with a little color here. I'll just take a little bit of this color. And when you pull that color out, do you see how this, that brings this jacket forward? So when you pull the color to the side, either side, uh, whichever side you choose, the other side is going to be to come forward. So just like this one now under here, this is going to come forward because I'm going underneath the line. And the same here. And you see how that jacket comes forward. If I were to go below the line, so do you see this line here? If I were to go below this line, it's gonna bring up this section. It's going to look like it's coming forward. And I don't want that. I want this to come forward. So I'm gonna go this way. So we can see that this part of the vest comes forward here and the same down here. And then when we get down to the shirt here, it's going to be on this side so that the shirt comes up. So the other side of the line, basically it creates a bank so that it raises up this area. And that's how we get things to look three-dimensional, the way that we pull the color out of the lines. So now I'm gonna do the same thing here and raise this jacket, um, the edge of this jacket up. And we can do the same with these pockets, see these little flaps on the pockets. We're gonna bring those forward as well, just by coloring that, putting that color. And we'll do more of that when we actually add the green um, to the jacket, we're gonna do more of that, but I want you to understand how that works, how you get this, um, this layered look. And you can see now that it's really starting to look three-dimensional here inside his coat. And that's what makes these things look three, this, that's what makes it look realistic. Uh, when you're trying to get something that looks more realistic as opposed to a coloring book page, you know, where everything is flat 
And if you, if you start out by coloring everything in solid, you've already kind of lost the battle. So once you lose your highlights, you've lost your, your um, three-dimensional, the three-dimensional look. So it's really, really important to take these little steps right away when you first start um, doing your composition. So now when we go to add the color here, uh, we can keep that all in mind. Okay, so I'm just going to take some of this green now, lightly, just a little bit. You always want to start light and I'm going to do this in, in the center of the sleeve. Remember this with the hat? You wanna leave that edge, and it sort of gives you, uh, makes your fabric a little thicker, so it's not paper thin. And then we're gonna come down, and kind of just, you know, start by maybe following these creases, because that's where it's gonna be the darkest. And then pinch your brush off, and kind of bring that color more to the center. And this is, you know, it's a fun process, you know, but it takes a little bit of time. So don't, kind of don't rush your way through it. Just take your time, do each section um, at a time. And then come under, you know, this area under his lapel here. That's gonna be darker underneath that as, as this pops up here. Just keep pinching your brush off and kind of dragging this color down. And then when we get to uh, when we get to the pockets, you know they're kind of they're popping out, and we've got this little crease here, you know, in the center. Uh, but this pocket is is uh, coming out away from the coat, and we do that we get that by darkening this edge here. And just by darkening that edge makes it look like that pocket is coming forward. Pinch your brush off. And then keep this, you know, the little flap um, lighter. And then we can actually add a little dark, you know, in here where the flap is. In this little dark area and you can see how that's starting to really um, come forward now and we're going to add some patterns to this too so we're just kind of in the starting stages of getting this color in so this you know this area here now this is pretty flat so we don't have to worry too much about um, contours here and we can take uh, some of this area. Now this, this is, this is a contour here and the color is going to be darker on the bottom of the sleeve. As you kind of come around and then you're going to have a light, it's going to be light on the top. And you can see I'm doing this really light. And if I think my color is too dark, I'm just pinching my brush off. I'm just pinching my brush off and then that that helps me to kind of fade that color um, back over and I'm just doing each section just going each section at a time and add this color now I'm going to go in here really dark again just like I did on that other sleeve get this in here really dark when you can add those dark areas that really gives you a lot more dimension just like you know under these little flaps under the pockets now in here you can see as these little creases you know come come down and around you know we've got our highlights on here so you can see that that's um, that's a contour there. And then underneath this little um, lapel, that's going to be darker. And 
and we can just make a little darker area under here. Just like that. Okay, so let's color in these little buttons. And I'm gonna use the my dark green, so same green, the 249. And I'm just gonna use the, um, the fine tip here and color in these buttons and leave that highlight uh, in the center. And then we can um, just darken um, the little buttonholes. And there's a little button over here too. And I can even just, you know, go in here with my fine tip and really darken this area. Okay, starting to take shape, you guys. Starting to take shape here. Okay, so now let's add some texture to his coat and make it a little more interesting. And I'm gonna do that with my fine tips. So I'm gonna switch back to my one inch brush. Make sure I don't have any red on it. So always be careful when you're switching uh, back and forth with red. Um, so I'm gonna add just a little detail here to the sleeve. And I'm just gonna make a little stripe. And this is, you know, a little rounded here. So you wanna kind of follow that contour, follow those lines, you know, kind of as they come around and this one too. Follow that. And then the pockets, these two. You can see how that just kind of comes around like this. And the more that you can show that, the more three-dimensional your, uh, your image is gonna look. And like I said, it doesn't matter if they're perfectly placed. You know, that doesn't matter at all. And we can just actually just add a, even a little darker color. You know, it creates a bank. And so when you've, when you've got a dark color underneath there, that's gonna bring that forward. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's go on to his little vest. And uh, we're gonna take some of this dark brown. And we're just gonna color in um, the little vest. You know, when you color with a brush, uh, you don't really have to deal with the lines, you know, like if you're using a marker that's direct to paper. Uh, it's really hard to, you know, uh, especially the colors are always really dark, and so I feel like you're always looking for a light, lighter marker, and it's really hard to get a good, consistent, even stroke. Uh, but when you're using a brush, you don't have to, to deal with any of that. Now you can see how I stayed within each section and I didn't cross those lines. And that's what makes it look like um, this is overlapping here. So I'm gonna take my, uh, my twin tone, darken my little buttons here. And then, you know, well, I'm just gonna turn this and let's add some detail in here, in this one too. It just, it doesn't take much to do this and it just adds so much uh, to your composition. Okay, so we've got his little vest there. And let's move down now to his shirt. And we're gonna keep this pretty neutral. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this brown and just brush it on here. And just keep this really light. And then I'm just gonna take my red and make the little buttons. Some little buttons like that. Here's where you could add some more detail. 
Maybe some little diamonds here on his shirt, something decorative. Um, use your imagination. You know, go look at your sweaters that you have in your closet and just kind of look at, you know, the designs and stuff that are on them and just try to duplicate that. It really, really adds a ton when you do that. It really, really does. You could do something, you know, that's just a little stitch like this also. Um, and that would add a lot of detail too. Okay, so here he is. He's starting to really take shape. I'm gonna um, zoom out now and then do this area down here. Okay, so let's do the um, let's do the snowy part. And we're just going to take some of this color now out away from the sides. You know, this is a this is a contour here. So we're going to have um, Uh, we're gonna have a highlight here. It's gonna be darker on the sides. And you know, where this little um, shirt is, we're gonna see, you know, a little shadow under here as well. And we can kind of create our little, you know, look of snow. And then to create a, the horizon in the background, uh, we're just gonna do that with, um, with a line like this and the sky will be above it. So that's kind of how you create the horizon. Um, let's just do it like this, kind of up here like this. So the sky will be above it and that's where you kind of get your, your horizon line, sort of like that. Okay, we'll come back to this when we put our, uh, when we put our snow in. So let's go on to the little bunny. And we're going to just pull out um, the color from the lines, just like we did before. And then we'll add some color to him. So I'm going to add some warm brown now to my palette. This is uh, a 947. And I'm going to just take some of this color now and let's just start with his little ears. You can see these are these are contours, so they're gonna be darker on the edges. And this one back here as well. See that little highlight on the top of his ear? Just wanna always show that. And then his little, his little body here. He's got his little tail back here. So this is, this is, this will be a little bit lighter because you can see his little, um, his little tail back here. And then I always leave the feet light, uh, white. I think that kind of breaks up the color a little bit, but that's totally up to you. You don't have to do that. It's kind of a habit for me now. So let's get some on his little face. And we wanna start out, you know, down here where it's darker. The face, this area here, and especially since he's looking up, this has gotta be really, really light. So you wanna be really careful that you don't get too much color up here. So once you've applied the color, you wanna pinch your brush off and then just kind of gradually drag this color up. And as you get, you know, closer to where his eyes are, um, you wanna keep this area really, really light. Now you can add, you can bring his cheek forward just like we did with the snowman. You can bring his cheek forward by making it darker. So just like that. And actually we can add a little paint to it and into his little ear as well. You can see how that just brings that forward. Now I'm gonna take my fine tip, uh, just like I did with the eyes on the snowman, and I'm just gonna really darken his little eyes. Just like that. You see how that just pops him out so much? It just changes his little face. And, and actually, I think I'll just, I'm gonna make this really dark too here. And I feel like um, that ornament just should be red. 
that he's holding on to. A little red ornament. And you know, it's a contour, so it's going to have a highlight. You know, it doesn't have to be big, but it just has to be there. You just gotta see it. And it's gotta be darker, you know, on the sides or on the bottom. So let's now um, add some color to his little scarf. Let's make his little scarf green. Stay in each section, come over to here and then jump that line and then do this section. And this, this little section under here, this will be darker because it's, you know, underneath. And actually this, we'll just have a little darker um, overlap. And we can just make a little detail on here and maybe make a little detail on here. And then I'm just going to add a little green to these little tassels. Just like that. And then his little tail, uh, because it's white, we're just going to take a little of this blue and just put a little blue under it. Just like his little feet here too. And that's really all we have to do with him. Isn't he cute? He's all done. So let's go do this little bird up at the top. And we're gonna do, kind of do the same with him. And I think I'll just, might as well do him blue. Just add a little blue to him. And his little cheek here. Just like that. And I'm just gonna come back in here and really get this area darker. Under here, you know, this is gonna be darker. Always think about domes and contours. So let's do his little, uh, I'm gonna switch my brush out and get my, my little brush again. And let's give him a little red scarf. And again, we're doing each section. Just follow this around. You can make it darker just by making another pass. So you always wanna start out lighter. And then let's do his little, his little hat here. And then his little beak, we might, we can take out the little orange here and do his little beak. And then we want to accent his eyes, just like we did, um, just like we did with the, the little bunny and the snowman. And then I'm going to just take uh, some of this blue because we've got his little white hat. So we're going to have a little shadow. On his little white hat. Let me hold that up so you guys can see. Be cute. So we, you guys, we are getting done with this little project. So uh, what I'm going to do now is use the Molotov and this is masking fluid and uh, what it does is um, it will create the snow. So I'm just going to make a few little dots here just like this while we just kind of finish up everything. This dries really quickly. I'll just kind of put these random wherever uh, we want to put them. And it doesn't, you don't need a ton because it's just kind of showing the idea of the snow. And while that's drying, we'll just go through here and see if there's any detail that we need to finish up. So I'm just going to put a little shadow. Oh, let me wash that brush out. I saw a little red in it. 
Uh, so a little shadow here. This would be the snowman's arm. So we want to just have a little blue on there. And the same here. Uh, just like that. Uh, let's make sure we've got a really dark um, shadow. I always like to go back after I'm finished and just make sure that I've got everything, you know, kind of all the details uh, taken care of and just add a little bit here and there. And I see that I forgot uh, the little patch on his arm. So let's do that. And this, you can see where I smudged that. That doesn't matter at all. We'll just rub it off. So that's not a big deal at all. If you do that, if you smudge that, when it's dry, just rub it off. So I'm just going to go like this and just put this little detail in here. And you can come back in also uh, with a fine tip and just make some little, you know, stitch lines here. You can do that in here as well. Just gonna make sure that this is really dark inside here. Uh, see if there's any other details that we're missing. Uh, let's add some texture to the little gloves so we can make some little dots on here. You know, wherever you can add a pattern, you guys, just do it. Dots and stripes are the easiest things to do and they don't have to be perfect. We've already kind of established that. So whenever you can do that, um, do it. It's going to add so much more to your composition. Just gonna go in here now and darken some of these up. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I think these little guys are probably almost dry. So let's just take this one off since I've already just kind of messed that up. Okay, so now let's add some color to this. And we're going to do it from the palette. So I'm gonna add some more blue onto here get enough water to really water this down just like this and then we're just going to brush it on. Uh, be really careful that your blue doesn't touch any part of the snowman. And you know with watercolor it's just the this blotchy look is okay. I think that really adds a lot um, to just leave it kind of blotchy like this. You just kind of put it on and just um, just leave it. And it's just, it's the idea of the sky. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And you get that, you know, it's a dark sky and the snow is falling and it's cold outside. And your little snowman is out in the snow. And these, you know, this set comes with dies too. So you could also just cut out, um, cut out these little images and attach them to a card that way too. But this is such a fun, easy way to color. And you know, I've only used about five pins. Um, so that also <laughs> makes it really, uh, makes it really fun. It doesn't take a lot of materials. Okay, so you can see our horizon line here. Let's go in and just um, add a little shadow underneath this little bunny. And this guy, we'll just draw in a little shadow here. Okay, I think 
we are getting finished. So we wanna make sure that that is really dry uh, before we um, do anything with that Molotov and take any of that off. So I'm just going in here and just putting a little shadow, you know, under this little candy cane so that it looks like it's kind of popped up a little bit. Um, I'm putting a little shadow under the pocket. So it looks like that little flap is kind of coming up. Um, all these little things add to your composition. Add a little darker area here. Okay, I think we are good. And you know, with these compositions, even though it's a stamp and you're, uh, you're using a stamp from a stamp set, you can sign and date these because this is your own work. By the time you have done this, uh, you've created something that's very original and unique to you. So it is, I would encourage you to be sure and sign, sign and date. So now I'm just rubbing these off and you can see that masking fluid has protected um, the area in the background and we've got our little snow showing through. So there we go. One last thing that I would do for sure is to put a little Wink of Stella on it. Uh, Wink of Stella is a glitter sparkle and I hope that you can see this on here. I, I will hold it up um, when I'm finished so that you can see but it's glitter and it's water-based, so it will blend your color. It will blend your color and it is will add so much to your composition. Just kind of go over the areas that you've already done and especially where the snow is uh, in the background, just wherever, just wherever on this little guy, little sparkle on him. And then do the red last because <laughs> the red will stay on here and it will uh, it will blend with everything else. So you wanna be sure to do the red last. Okay, let's do the red and then we are finished uh, with this composition. And I hope you guys learned something uh, it was so fun for me to teach you this. These little tricks make all the difference. Okay, so let me see if you, can you guys see that sparkle on here at all? Uh, it really, really, it really adds a lot. So here it is close up, there's the little bird. And do these things in sections. You know, start out with the hat and then work your way down. Stay in each section. That's my biggest advice for you is to stay in each section. Don't get overwhelmed and uh, don't forget your highlights and your shadows, you guys, your highlights and your shadows. So I'm going to sign and date this. And this one is finished. And I hope you guys give this one a try. Here is the stamp set again. It is a Christmas Slimline set 5461 with this little guy on here. And you get all these little critters. You get two little birds and this little bunny and a whole bunch of little sentiments that you can add to your card and to your greeting. So I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you again real soon.